Hey guys, Justin here. So today I'm going to be talking about QuantumScape stock. And even though I did my last video on QuantumScape stock, I want to do another video on QuantumScape because I wanted to cover the recent comments made by CEO Jagdeep Singh concerning the massive drop in QuantumScape stock that happened last week. Despite reaching a high of $131 a share on December 22nd, QuantumScape has since fallen by over 50% with most of that drop occurring in a single day. Now, naturally, CEOs of multi-billion dollar companies do not like seeing their stock price drop by 40% in a single day. So it didn't really surprise me to see QuantumScape's CEO come out and make a statement on it. Now, in that statement, he said that he believed the sell-off was triggered by the company filing what's known as a resale S1 form on December 31st. And he went on to say that he thinks investors wrongly assumed that the filing meant that QuantumScape would be selling shares, which would have had the effect of diluting current investors. Also, on top of this, investors also interpreted the filing to mean that institutional investors were potentially gearing up to sell shares. Now, we will get into the S1 form in a minute, but first, let's look at Singh's response. He said that the purpose of the resale S1 form was to permit the resale of shares that were already issued or that may be issued on exercise of options and warrants that were already issued. Now, to me, I don't fully understand what he's saying here. When a warrant is exercised, it will cause dilution because a company is obligated to issue new shares whenever a warrant is exercised. So just because it is a resale S1 form does not mean that new shares won't be issued. And just to confirm that this is true, I ended up looking up the actual S1 form that QuantumScape filed. Now, even though this is a 229 page document and it does contain a lot of information, the information we care most about is included in the first paragraph, which is on page two. So let's take a quick look. You can see here in the second sentence, it says the securities offered here under include 306,053,642 shares of our class A common stock, which includes class A common stock issuable upon conversion of class B common stock. So right there, issuable is referring to shares that do not currently exist. It then goes on to say that of these 306 million shares, 254 million of them are already issued and outstanding. And the word issued and outstanding make it very clear that these 254 million shares mentioned here are shares that do currently exist. Now, what this also means is that of the 306 million shares that are being offered here, roughly 51.7 million of them don't currently exist. And if we read further in this first paragraph, we can see where exactly all of these shares are coming from. Now, I won't bore you with the details, but essentially they are coming from a combination of private warrants, public warrants, stock options, and vesting activities. And just to make sure that I wasn't missing anything, I went ahead and added up all of the shares that QuantumScape laid out, and ding, 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 they all add up to exactly 51,734,467 shares, which is the exact difference between the current existing shares and the new total amount of shares that QuantumScape is listing. And what's unfortunate about this is that it will cause quite a bit of dilution, which for current investors in QuantumScape stock, this is not good news. In fact, if we calculate the effect this will have on the stock price, we can see that once all of these new shares are issued, it will cause a dilution of 20%, which is honestly terrible. When Tesla sold $5 billion worth of shares on December 9th, they caused dilution of just under 1%. And when NEO, another high-flying EV stock, offered up 68 million shares on December 14th, they only caused a stock dilution of 5%, which honestly, 5% is still pretty high, but it's a lot less than 20%. So essentially what this 20% dilution means is that once all of these new shares are issued, QuantumScape stock will be worth 20% less than it is today, which for current investors is a pretty raw deal. And it's honestly not surprising that people use this as an opportunity to sell their shares and book their profits before this big dilution occurs. Now, to be fair to QuantumScape, they do say that 244 million of these 306 million shares are subject to certain lockup agreements. 
So it is not like this 20% dilution will occur in a single day. But still, it does create a situation where once these lockup agreements expire, massive dilution could occur. And if it occurs too quickly, then we could see another big sell-off in QuantumScape stock. That is, if the shares are sold in mass once the lockup date has passed. And if we get back to QuantumScape CEO Jagdeep Singh's comment, we can see that he makes sure to emphasize this lockup agreement by saying that most of the shares in the S1 filing are subject to lockup agreements, which honestly is a smart move on his part. Instead of focusing on the massive dilution that is set to occur, he shifts the focus to the lockup agreements and tells investors not to worry which over the short term, he is right. It is nothing for investors to worry about because it won't happen for a while. But over the long term, it is a risk that investors need to be aware of. Now, I combed through QuantumScape's S1 filing and I was able to find the details of the actual lockup agreement. On page 87, it lays out when exactly legacy stockholders can sell their shares. And it looks like it's a pretty standard agreement. The agreement states that legacy QuantumScape stockholders can sell their shares after 180 days from the closing date. And since QuantumScape closed their merger with KCAC on November 25th, that would mean this lockup would expire on roughly May 24th of this year. But with that being said, there also is a provision that would allow legacy shareholders to sell earlier if certain standards are met. If the share price of QuantumScape stock is above $12 a share for 20 consecutive trading days between April 24th and May 24th, then shareholders can go ahead and sell before the full 180 days has transpired. But regardless of that extra stipulation, by May 24th, insiders will be able to sell their QuantumScape stock if they want to. Now, despite this massive dilution that is set to occur, QuantumScape CEO Jagdeep Singh is reassuring investors that everything is business as usual. He said that there have been no changes in business operations and that everything QuantumScape has discussed with investors up to this point remains on track. He also said that he blames the big price swing on Monday primarily on short-term traders who are simply booking profits. And he also said that he and everyone else at QuantumScape remains focused on the long-term future of the company. Now, this is reassuring to hear from the CEO, and honestly, it is what any good CEO would be saying at this point. But one thing that Singh did not bring up was a Seeking Alpha article that was published on January 4th. And this Seeking Alpha article was very critical of QuantumScape's battery results. Now, normally a Seeking Alpha article or a Motley Fool article would not carry much influence since these articles can be written by pretty much anybody. But in this case, the author, whose name is Brian Morin, is actually the CEO of a company called Soterra Battery Innovation Group. And I looked up Brian on LinkedIn and it looks like this is a guy who has a pretty impressive resume. Brian used his company to form a consortium of companies that include NASA, Mercedes, DuPont, Applied Materials, and and over 40 others to help mature a new battery separator that will dramatically improve the safety of lithium ion batteries. So this is a guy that probably has a pretty good idea of what is possible with QuantumScape's new battery tech. But essentially this Seeking Alpha article he wrote really pokes some holes in QuantumScape's business plan. And I think it is important to draw a distinction here between QuantumScape's battery science and their future business plans for their batteries. Because even if QuantumScape can successfully get a commercial battery to market, it doesn't mean that they will be able to turn a significant profit from selling those batteries. Also, one of the biggest things that Brian points out in this article is that, believe it or not, there is actually pretty stiff competition in the lithium ion battery space. And even though QuantumScape has shown some significant advantages of using their batteries over current batteries, they are not the only ones trying to make lithium ion batteries better. Another company that Brian mentions in this article is a battery company called Amprius. Now, instead of trying to raise energy density by using pure lithium as the anode, like QuantumScape is doing, Amprius is attempting to use pure silicon which would allow for higher energy densities than even QuantumScape's batteries. So don't think that QuantumScape is the only player in the battery game who has a viable solution. There are many different companies that are trying to create next-gen lithium-ion batteries, and QuantumScape is only one of them. Now, in Brian's Seeking Alpha article, he lays out the bottom line on QuantumScape stock. And unfortunately, it's not great. There are a number of problems with QuantumScape's batteries that Brian lays out. 
Brian starts by saying that he does believe QuantumScape will be successful in bringing a solid state battery to market. However, he then goes on to lay out some caveats. First, he says that QuantumScape's lithium ion batteries will most likely have lower energy density than Amprius has achieved today. And let that sink in. He is saying that in 2024, QuantumScape's commercially viable battery will most likely have less energy density than Amprius's current batteries today. So that is a pretty significant claim. He then says that QuantumScape's solid state batteries will most likely show up in watches and wearables first before maybe appearing in phones. And he also adds that he does not believe QuantumScape's batteries will be able to withstand the aggressive automotive environment that EVs operate in. So it sounds like he believes that these solid state batteries might not show up in EVs for a very long time, if ever. He then says that he believes these batteries will take much longer to scale than most people think, and that they will be far more expensive than today's lithium ion batteries. And to make things worse, he adds that QuantumScape's batteries will most likely never be lower cost than contemporary lithium ion batteries, which would be a big problem. And finally, he says that once a suitable size cell is made, that it may not actually be any safer than current lithium ion batteries. Now, he explains his reasoning for this more in depth in the article, so go and read it if you want to hear his reasoning. But put together, the risks that Brian lays out are quite serious, and they could have very negative effects on QuantumScape's long-term stock price. Now, it may turn out that he is ultimately wrong, but these are still risks for long-term investors in QuantumScape stock to keep in mind. Things like competition, cost, profitability, and safety are big factors that long-term investors do have to account for. And if QuantumScape cannot successfully mitigate these risks as they move forward, then their stock price will most likely take a massive hit. But in my opinion, after analyzing all of this data, I do not believe that QuantumScape is scamming investors. And what I mean by this is, I don't think they are intentionally lying about the results they've achieved up to this point. However, just because I do not believe QuantumScape is scamming investors does not mean QuantumScape is a risk-free investment. In my opinion, the biggest problem for investors wanting to buy QuantumScape stock is that there are simply too many unknowns. Will QuantumScape's batteries be cost competitive? Will they be safer? Will they be able to even be used in EVs? It's hard to say, but these are some of the unknowns and they will be very difficult to predict. Now, the second biggest problem for investors is that 2024 is a long time to go without having a product to sell. And it will be difficult for QuantumScape to keep investors excited between now and 2024. Most businesses are built on the products and services they offer. So QuantumScape not having a viable product means it is very difficult to properly value the company. This was a big problem with Nikola stock and it is a big problem with most of the speculative EV SPACs out there right now. So at the end of the day, QuantumScape stock has a lot of potential, but it is still a very risky investment. Therefore, I wouldn't hold more than 1% to 3% of my portfolio in QS stock, and I would plan on holding for at least the next 5 to 10 years. Now, personally, I have not invested in QuantumScape stock up to this point, and I have no plans of investing in them in the future. But if they can show that they are mitigating some of these unknowns and that they are solving some of these problems, then I might consider buying their stock sometime in the future. But with that being said, let me know what you think about QuantumScape stock down in the comment section below. Are you buying? Have you already bought? Or are you staying away? Let me know. Also, make sure to check out my channel where I have a bunch of other great videos about stocks and the stock market. And with that, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.